it's an argument opening up a clear advantage at the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind offices. An argument by a... Welcome back to episode number 11 of Not the Road to Cheltenham Challenge. It is the Champ that E podcast. It is Thursday night. A new look uh, podcast tonight. Rona Groom is ski and Mike Vince is caught up with work. And I have Davey Boland back in the show. Welcome back, Dave. Thanks for having me, Barry. And it's uh, Wednesday night, not Thursday night, Barry, but you're... You were wrong that about is... Shishkin last week and you are wrong with the days this week, but shall we leave you off, Barry? You've had the tough week. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, look, come here. Look, you give me enough grief and in fairness, they're queuing up for me, Dave, in the comments. So if anyone wants to continue to stick, uh, get stuck in. Speaking of interaction and the viewers, um, the subscribers were pouring in. We never really give the, the podcast a plug and ask people to subscribe, but um, since we did, they have been subscribing. So continue to subscribe to the show and um, they were pouring in last week and the comments we have something a little bit new look as well when it comes to the tipping at the end of the show which we will introduce it's called the champ that a five cast that we're going to be introducing we're going to get the viewers to put in we're going to cover four feature races on the podcast every thursday between now and the end of the season obviously Dave, you are right it is wednesday but the five cast will be introduced here we'll be picking a selection uh, in each of the five feature races and giving a wild card at the end which makes it, uh, I suppose, a, a lucky 31 if you want it to be. Um, but, you know, it is the, the champ that he five cast. And Davy Boland has agreed a prize. Davy, tell the listeners. <laughs> the first person who gets the five cast up, what are you giving them? I give them a Racing's Inside Track hat and jacket. Okay. Fantastic. And I'll come in then with a prize uh, on the second part uh, from a champ that perspective. Okay. Lads, um, Davy, the first... Um, race that we're going to preview is the Goffs Tiestes. You've done a lot of work. I've enjoyed it, Dave, to be fair. Uh, you've got a lot of good coverage, um, lots of voices uh, locally. Um, I'd say you enjoyed the last two weeks building up to the Tiestes. Yeah, it was good. I was delighted to get asked to do the work um, by Eddie Scally, general manager of Gorham Park and, of course, Wexford as well um, um, for Goffs. So they wanted videos for 14 days of people connected to the race somehow as many local as possible so um obviously you're talking to a lot of the william mullins camp um spoke to gordon obviously he's won two of the last four runnings um shark people who haven't won the race too but are local trainers and and know what it means to the to the community because you know yourself Barry, you're not far from there it's, it's massive it's massive one day in the middle of a week is i think jane mangan hit the nail on the head there's not many festivals that get crowds like this does, you know. And with restrictions lifted last week, I'd say the place will be absolutely rammed tomorrow, which is brilliant. I'm looking forward to. They'll have to drag the shark out of the top bar. Love, I, I love that 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 particular interview. Of course, you got <laughs> Sean Doyle as well. Um, yeah, it was it was a great footage, uh, Dave. So well done on that. Uh, just going back, I suppose Thank over you. the last ten last ten years, um, the Goffs TS days. Um, you know, if you look at it, I suppose Willie has won five of the last ten. Gordon is mm. is creeping up there with two winners in the last uh, five years. Henry de Bromhead, uh, Liam Burke, um, Paul John Gilligan, and um, Desi Hughes won it. Um, you know, and I would in... imagine it's an extremely short price for either Willie or Gordon to win it again tomorrow. Yeah, it is. We run down to the betting, Dave. Um, Noel Meads, um, Doll Care, six to one, uh, best price. Mm. Uh, so he heads. He's come in for support um, over the last twenty four hours. Brayside Garden Elliot, thirteen to two. Eclat Eclat Rear, eight to one. Henry de Bromhead, Longhouse Poet, and our special guest on the show this week is Martin Brazel. Uh, I caught up with Martin earlier, so uh, he came in for a lot of support, didn't he, Dave? Twenty to one, I think it was a week ago. Um, he's come right down in price um, and drifted back out a little bit, but he is 8-1, to one, uh, possibly well found in the market. Escaria 10, 9-1 to one, uh, for Gordon. Franco de Port, Willie Mullins, the choice of Paul Town at 11-1. to one. Uh, Mr. Fog Patches, 14-1. to one. On the ropes, 14-1. Uh, to one. Scarlet and Dove, 14-1. to one. Coco Beach, of course, the next winner, 16-1. to one. Death Judy, 18-1. to one. And it's 20-1 to one bar. Uh, Dave, dissect. Um... All week, I'd be a big Braysides fan. 
Um, I thought he had a very good run in Leopardstown at Christmas in the Paddy Power Chase where he finished fourth, not beaten too far. And he would relish more testing conditions than what he faced in Leopardstown at Christmas, Barry. Um, we, we all know what, what the ground was be like in Leopardstown and um, she was only yielding ground, wasn't it? Um, whether it's going to be soft enough for him and Gorn tomorrow, I'm not so sure. Um, I'd say it'd be more sort of tacky um grounds but uh yeah that was a that was a very good run he went up two pounds for finishing fourth so my selection in the race barry is a horse that was just behind him in fifth um debt duty ridden by promising youngster jordan gameford who doesn't live who's from not too far from gore park um debt duty had um that was his first run in nearly a year um, we all know he was a very, very smart hurdler. Um, I, I, I'd imagine he's improved an awful lot for the run um, in Leopardstown. And these conditions, that ground as well, just like will suit uh, Brayside more as well. Uh, the more testing conditions will definitely suit this lad as well. And uh, at a big price there, 20 to 1, maybe 18s in, 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 in most places. Um, He'd be my pick. I think there's some bookies paying six places as well in the race for only 18 runners. That's not bad. Um, it's good value. Um, so, yeah, Detu is my pick at a bigger price. Jordan Ginford still have the Races Inside Track TV leggings? No, no, no. Jordan's gone on to bigger and better things. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't afford Jordan any longer. <laughs> Well, look, come here. I think uh, you're absolutely spot on. I actually gave you a call earlier on and we were, we were talking about the race and he was on my short list, Davey, debt duty. Um, £20. He's come down in the handicap since his last win over fences in 2017. So uh, most of his best form, as you said, is on soft to heavy. Um, yeah, and look, <clears throat> I thought it was an encouraging run off a 300-day layoff uh, and only carries, of course, 10 stone three. So, you know, you've covered all that. He is a big price. Um, he would be my each-way play in the race. Um, but I suppose the, the one I, I, I do like also is Franco de Port. Um, and if you had to probably pin me for a selection, as I said, Willie has won the last five. Uh, so, w sorry, won five of the last 10 um, runnings of the race. Uh, he is the choice of Paul Townend, um, who we had on the show last week. Uh, and look, some of his form, I, I like his profile moving up in trip, Dave. Um, you know, yeah. obviously la last year he was campaigned as a two miler, um, won the grade one um, at the um, at, at Christmas, uh, the racing post, is it at Leopardstown? Uh, and he yeah. stayed on that day. He shaped like, you know, this horse is going to be much better up in trip. Uh, he is, of course, yeah, he, winner. He looked at like he was well beaten down the back that day. Cooper won on him. Yeah, he gave him a brilliant ride that day, actually. Patient. Mm. Um, but I think all this season, Dave, it's been, I feel as though he's been building up to, to a big handicap like the Tiestes. And, um, you know, back on, I suppose, at Goran, where he's won, he won an obvious hurdle around Goran Park on softer ground. Um, I liked him a week ago. I think he was 20 to 1. Obviously, when Town and when Town and uh, he was a selection of Paul, um, obviously he contracts in price. Um, but what, what struck me the last day about him, Dave, was um, you know, Briney, he was he traveled, I suppose, he was he was in Briney's hands the whole way. Um, and you know, he he made decent ground, I felt, um, from from three out to two out, where he made a, a bad mistake and it ended his chance. Um, so I, I think he's interesting, um, you know. Over three miles, it will be only a second start at three miles. And I'd say I wouldn't be surprised if he, I suppose, he's ridden more forward in a race like this. Kept out of trouble. Um, ridden handy, I'd say, in a race like this. He jumps well. So his jumping, I think, you know, that's probably, you probably have to make use of his jumping. Um, and I just see him, I see him being supported on the day. Uh, 11 to 1, I think, represents good value at this stage. Um, and he'd be my, my number one selection. But I do like your shout on that, Judy, I must say. Um, anything else yeah, to add before well, we move on? Franco de Port, uh, his last seven runs have been in grade one races, which is, is unbelievable, you know. Seven, seven, well, well, like I know he won one of those, and you can say a couple of them were, were fairly disappointing, but so this is a well campaigned grade one horse dropping back to a handicap off a nice weight and ridden by the champion jockey and ridden, uh, trained by the champion trainer. So you have to, you have to respect the horse. And wasn't disgraced behind an urge, I mean, of course, in Dairy Sharkle last year. 
Anyway, of course, he had to. He did have to get a mention, Dave. I'm not going to get you started. Do you know, actually, just want to mention one more. If I was to give, I suppose, Scarlet and Dove, I thought she impressed me the last day. I thought she ran a very decent race behind my, at Mount Ida at Fairy House. Yeah. Thoughts on her? Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. It was a very good run at Fairy House. Um, yeah, def, de- definitely well worth a chance. You know, I know it's typical um, of, 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 of these handicaps where you could pick seven or eight of them and say any of those could win but um this this is typically one of those where you know you can make a case for so many of them what i'm interested is that you didn't mention uh rachel blackmore's rides henry the brown horse the Bromhead's horse um Sam exactly. for me, Barry. that's the one you were mad keen on him before last year i was and you've probably seen the people have to forgive him for his run in uber too you know that can happen of course, he's by Sadex as well, a great sire. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, well, but, 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 but looking at him, like, why would you forgive him, Dave? Jeez, it was bad, wasn't it? Overall. It was, but sure. And, he, you know, like, going, in, going into that, he was favourite. Um, all the hype about him. Um, any, any horse can, can, can have an off day. I, I didn't hear reports of what what they said was there an issue or anything but you have you have to give him like he, he went one one he unseated and then he won he loves testing conditions um he stays he jumps you know you got it yeah you know, I'm, not, I'm not saying he's one that i'd be backing but you, you have to forgive versus one bad run you know it was interesting when we were speaking to martin brazil and we are going to bring him in just after after we look at the race here but um I mentioned to him there's an awful lot of unexposed types in the race. His Longhouse Port being one, Eclat de Rear, you mentioned, you know, Brayside, Escaria, 10 Franco de Port. And then you have the more experienced, well, horses with a little bit more experience in handicaps, Mr. Fog Patches, uh, on the ropes, uh, your Coco Beaches, you know, your debt duties almost at this stage. So, geez, Dave, it's a cracking renewal. Oh, it's a great race. It's a great race. It's, um, yeah, it, like I said, you, you can make a case for so many of them. Um and uh, yeah, I think and 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 this race is always won by a good horse, you know, and and, and there's a couple of good horses in this. So, Goffs can start giving us a few quid now as well, Dev. <laughs> now, yeah. lads, let's bring in, um, let's bring in Martin Brazel. Martin Brazel is um was our special guest on the show. Spoke to him earlier on. Uh, let's hear from Martin. So delighted to be joined on episode number eleven of the Champ that E podcast by. Martin Brazel. Martin, thanks very much for joining us. Great to have you on. Thanks very much. It's Longhouse Pod. You're well represented in here. He's been supported, Martin. Uh, are you confident of a big run? Well, I'm hopeful that the man will be tough and he's not crying out so much for because he's not the very least in what he's He can handle heavier than that. So um, we've, had to, like, we've had three weeks of very dry weather now and uh, most of the other tracks they wouldn't be soft like they're causing good yielding and um so I'm just hoping that the the ground description is going to be what it says, you know. Yeah, and I suppose number six Valverde, we spoke about him, um obviously a previous winner for yourself. In terms of, you know, the experience that Longhouse Poet has, there's a lot of unexposed types going into the Tiestas this year. What's your thoughts, I suppose, on the race as a whole? Yeah, there's a good few unexposed ones, but there's quite a few exposed as well. Um, I just thought Tatsahi's horses are flying there at the moment. I thought his horse, Mr. Fog Patches, uh, he uh, could be a horse slightly in a nice lightweight there and claiming three of them. And uh, the horse of uh, Gordon is there that way. He, he, you know, he's a horse that knows the stamina. And uh, he had a good fort in the Paddy Power as well. He won the Cork National, so and uh, seems to be a bit of an interest there in uh, the old care of uh, all needs as well. So, um, you know, it's it's competitive, like, but there's plenty of horses there that probably have, have seen better days, but uh, at the same time, they have the ratings to take part in the race so everyone wants to have if they have even kinked out a half a chance of competing in a race of that value that they want to be involved you know 
Yeah, speaking of competitive and I suppose the ratings, you know, your, your fella was, was competitive enough, wasn't he, at the top level over, over hurdles, achieving, I suppose, a rating of 144. Uh, he's just a pound higher now, Martin, over fences. Uh, and, of course, the, the form at Run Wild Fred, that doesn't look too bad. No, but uh, his rating is probably based on that Run Wild Fred, and so on that, he's just checked. He's only won a beginner's chase, and, like, he... Uh, like he's, he's, he's based really, his, his rating is based on what some of the horses around him have done. You know, uh, Don Wild Fred and the Big Dog and that sort of horse, and, and uh, they're in, in Nace as well. Like the Boca Beach finished in front of him and he was second to test Benita Bello. So, um, he has to go and prove it now that he's racing is accurate, you know what I mean? Uh, the race in Limerick that he ran in there over Christmas, like, you'd be hoping he'd come on from that anyway, and it was probably a bit short to be the best in tripwise, but I couldn't run him into Paddy Power because I was too good there, so that's the reason I went to Limerick was for after heavier ground. So, um, he has to go and step up now and... Uh, how has he come out of the race in Limerick, Martin? Well, oh, great, yeah. He, he takes his race very well. Good hardy horse, you know, fine big strong horse and jumps well. And he, he, uh, he's a tough horse, so he's, you know, he's well up for the, he's well up for the job now. So uh, he needs to, he needs to uh, step up to the mark and see how he gets on. Yeah, and I suppose he, he did have a bit of time off, didn't he, before his run, obviously, on his return at Limerick. Um, what was the reason for that? He, he just got a bad gash the day he won his beginners in, uh, in Punchestown. He just got a nasty cut there on his path, on his hind path, and then it just took plenty of time to heal up. So by the time it was cleaned up, Brown had dried out, and uh, we just left him out of his hair and break a bit earlier than normal. But um, he's he's very sound horse. Yeah, and you mentioned he's he's a hardy horse. So I suppose what what type of character does he have? Uh, how could you compare his character, I suppose, to the ex winner, um, number six Valverde? Yeah, but he's he, probably a bit more giving with his work at home than number six was anyway. But number six Valverde, you could you could work him with the best or the worst horse in the yard. He's just doing up. So he brought his. He's got his best uh, his A game to the races and, and uh, didn't use it up too much at home. Yeah. Uh, um, mm. but it's, it, you know, he's a good work horse to a point, yeah. And uh, facilities on the car are great. There's plenty of deep sand to work those big heavy national hunt horses. And uh, I think the facilities are probably way better than they were when number six Alberti was being trained. Uh, they've improved uh, quite a lot. Yeah. On the car, I wish you the best of luck with Longhouse Port, uh, Martin. On the car, on the same car, of course, uh, you raise me up, which is, he's a quite lightly raced uh, nine-year-old, isn't he? He goes in the beginners. Yeah, he does, yeah. Um, he, uh, he ran ahead of the first round of our fences there and punched down behind Bernie Hollow and uh, the favourite in tomorrow's race was back in the back, so he had a good bit of ground to make up on him and uh, of course, the blame has had another run since, so he'll probably have a bit of an edge on us, but we need to get him out and, and uh, get the experience into him because, um, you know, he's, he's a nine-year-old, as you say, and uh, his best days could be behind him. Yeah, and I suppose, you know, last year, obviously, he went to Cheltenham over hurdles. Um, as you say, he's only had the yeah, he got injured in that race. He, he landed over the last, and uh, Sarah felt him uh, a bit of a false step, and he pulled him up at the line. He ended up because he had a fracture, and lucky Dara pulled him up as soon as as quickly as he did. Otherwise, he could have been fatal. He, uh, he fractured his tibia that day, so he uh, he needed a good lot of rest and recuperation from that. Mm. So he, he's in great shape again. Now he's very sound. Great stuff and confident, Dalil. Yeah, well. he jumped. He seems to love it too. He's had a very big horse, but uh, 
seems to he seems to like it. Yeah. Probably, probably find an easier assignment than that now, but uh, at least he'll have more experience under his belt if he doesn't win tomorrow. And looking at the spring, is Cheltenham potentially on the agenda again with him? No, no, we just Cheltenham and miss this year and uh, keep him at home. Yeah, okay. A couple more winners then to, to mention, uh, Martin, just I suppose over the last over the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, you're in, I suppose the, the strike rate's pretty decent. I was looking at it there over 21% this year so far. Um, Epic Song. Now, he impressed me, Martin, at uh, Punchestown. He's got up £13, pounds, Dublin Racing Festival entry. Is that the plan? Yeah, uh, the ground is, is okay. He's probably run there. Um, he's leading in anyway, see what the what the competition looks like. But um, ideally, he probably went a bit further, but I remember listening to Charles Burns after he won it there in uh, what year was it? 2019, I think. Uh, 20, no, 19. Um, he actually raised me up his third time in it. And uh, I think Charles has won three or four of them. He said he actually need a two and a half mile horse to win this race. It's that, you know, it's that strong mm. compared to mm. the face. So this horse does it need to be further than two miles, so it won't be a problem to stamina wise anyway. Yeah, and I suppose, you know, both his winning has been on heavy ground uh, since right. since he came to France. Is that, is yeah. that, uh, is it necessary? It'd be more effective, be more effective on heavy, but like he's, he, he was third at Mace on nice, or uh, fourth at Mace on nice ground. And uh, I'd say as he gets older, he probably handled the best of us. Like, if, if I had to try the ground, he'd be taken heavy, all right. Mm, speaking of Leopardstown, <clears throat> Panda Boy, uh, he won the pretend qualifier, didn't he, at Leopardstown? He's got up eight pounds. Thoughts on yeah. that? He's got up eight pounds, yeah. Um, so he'll run, and... Uh, he won't mind the Lapis Down ground again. I'd say he's not a horse that would like a two testing. So uh, if it's yielding or yield the soft, it will be grand for him. Um, he, uh, he was impressive enough on the day. It kind of was a pleasant surprise because we were a bit disappointed with his run at Mace in the bowl last. Uh, he finished ninth. So we stepped him up and trip and freshened him up. Uh, I brought about the, the desire to solve Tanya and uh, looking forward to seeing him out again. Could he be one that could maybe potentially go to Cheltenham or one of the spring festivals? It all depends. Uh, it's going to a, some sort of a spring festival anyway. I'm not sure if it'll be Cheltenham or not, but uh, so we'll have to wait and see now if we can follow up, follow up that run. Mm. Um, Another young horse, Martin, Daring Rocco. That was a good run, wasn't it? Behind our tool. He's a nice part of the uh, but back to the family of uh, daring run actually. And uh, he he just kind of got a bit of stage fright the first day he ran in, in punches down and finished seventh. I was a bit disappointed I thought he'd be in the first three. So uh, we popped him out handy in uh down Royal and he ran a lovely race to finish second to a, a good horse Crawford or two and um, looking forward to building on that now so he's entered for an ace there on Sunday but if, if he doesn't go there he'd be out shortly yeah it's probably be rude wouldn't it Martin not to mention the seven timer <laughs> Glen, Quinn, oh. Glen Quinn Castle how is he uh, he's gone home for a break a well, a well deserved break he's, uh, he was a revelation really he, he, we were hoping he'd win small race or two summer but he just just kept winning anyway even though he made it look tough most of the time um, and it was great really like it's I, I can't remember my racing career or training career or horse doing that uh, so um, some good horses through the years I know Brave Inca might have won five in a row but I don't know if there were handicaps and uh, to be able to mix it with turns and senses like he did, you know, he just he adapted very well when he went back hurdling from chasing and vice versa. So, uh, he needs to look at 
he's going to get it's going to get tough from now on. And but she's having a well deserved break anyway, and we'll have him back again for the spring summer and see if he can win another few. Great stuff, Mark. Well, look, it was it was a pleasure chatting with you, and uh, I do I do wish you the best with, uh, of course, Longhouse Pod and, and your honours uh, over the next couple of days. Uh, finally, I suppose for the champ that I listeners, I suppose young horses, any horses that we haven't mentioned, is there any one in the Martin Brazilier that we should be keeping an eye on? Yeah, Barry Rappel, probably the horse you mentioned there. Um, he's a I think he's a very promising horse, and uh, we'll be looking forward to him. He jumps hurdles, he jumps fences as well as he jumps hurdles, so. <clears throat> He could be one to keep an eye on. And we have a uh, choice of words there. She's decent there. She won in Galway there. And she's sick. She, she was uh, checking at Limerick at Christmas. So uh, she might be out in Nace there next month and possibly go to Chelsea for the mayor's novice. Pleasure, Martin Brazel. Best of luck. Lovely. Thanks very much. Yeah, brilliant to hear from Martin Brazel. Uh, best of luck to Connections, Longhouse Poet um, in the Tiestes. 205, Dev. Uh, the Galmoy Hurdle, Grade 2. The ground is is a little bit quicker on the hurdle course? Yeah, always on the inside. It's always a little bit quicker than it is on the outside. Um, Heads the betting, so classical dream. 1 yeah. to 2. Royal Kahala. Royal Kahala, 5 to 1. Gentleman's Game, 11 to 1. Mr. Adjudicator, 16 to 1. Commander of the Fleet, 20 to 1. Ashdale Bob, 33s. Home by the Lee, 40s. And it is uh, 50 to 1 any second now. Court made. Love that horse. 80 to 1. <laughs> uh, court made. But anyway, what, what what's you're saying it's straightforward. Is that, is that your. Well, I wouldn't say straightforward. Listen, Royal Kahala is a very good mare. Um, she beat a good field the last day in Leopardstown. Given a, a very good ride by Kevin Sexton, but um, Classical Dream's performance was was Jesus it was uh, was very good. Now, to be fair, you know, I know there was a lot of people. I was there on the day, so I didn't get to hear what they said on TV. But it was interesting. Um, Paul kind of got a bit of a freebie at the start. I wouldn't say Danny was too impressed with the starter. Um, the starter has made several mistakes like that. But listen. All Paul can do is ride his own horse, and um, he got a few lengths leads on Classical Dream over Floor and Porter. But uh, geez, he went some gallop the whole way, Barry, and and sustained it the whole way. You know, like Floor and Porter, he won the race the year previous. You know, he's a lot better horse going left handed, and uh, he was closing in on him at the end. But still, I think Classical Dream had plenty in the tank, and um, it was his first run of the season as well. Um, he did have a very hard race, but, you know, I'm sure he's obviously fine now and uh, that's why they're running him. And then after this, then he'll go to Cheltenham. So obviously Willie feels that this is an easier task than going to Leopardstown um, next weekend for the Dublin Racing Festival, which he'll probably face on quicker ground as well. So um, Peter Fatty's mare, as good as she is, Barry, and... Um, I, I, I can't see how any anything uh, beats Classical Dream, even though she is getting plenty of weight. I think she gets eleven pounds off um, Willie's horse, but um, no, the Classical Dream for me. Yeah, Dave, I'm not sure if it, it is as straightforward as you're making it, because you know, just uh, sticking with Classical Dream for a second, it was an absolute cracking race wasn't it himself and Florin Porter obviously yeah, you mentioned you know, the head start he got but they came miles clear and I just wonder I was actually quite surprised to see him run here because I know Willie had album photo in the mm. in the I actually in, thought he goes straight to Cheltenham after after Christmas so did I and, and that's obviously the route the Florin Porter has gone he is one to two in here um I do agree I think he will take beaten but I think she's an absolute filthy each way bet, Dev Royal Kahala, because I backed her. I actually napped her um, at uh, at Christmas in the Grade Three, and you know, you look at the horses that have, you know, the, they finished, they finished close enough to get her in the finished. But I think this one, she was just absolutely crying for a step up and trip. And as soon as I, I did, Peter Fat, you mentioned it after the race, or maybe it just came into my head. But I thought three miles, Galmai, going right handed. 
um, stepping up, I suppose, into so we're stepping up in trip, but but also going mixing it with the geldings. The first thing came to mind um, was this horse is going to, you know, the further she goes, the better she is. The ground is going to be absolutely ideal. You know, her best form is around Fairy House, um, going right handed. And like, I wouldn't be surprised if she, if this was her day, because I'm not even sure if, if they're even looking at Cheltenham mm-hmm. with, with, with Royal Kahala. Um, based on her own, I suppose, there last year. She does get, as you said, £11. Pounds. She's going to have to improve. She is. There's no doubt about that um, on ratings, on official ratings. But I take a chance on her now. I think she's a, as I said, she's a filthy each way bet at five to one. Can't see her out of the money. I really can't. Um, and I just, it was a hard race. Classical Dream did get. So I certainly wouldn't be, I wouldn't be touching him at that sort of price anyway. Um, so my selection, Royal Kahala each way. Um, you know, you've 13 runners as it is, so can't see her out of the frame. Um, anything else I suppose worth a mention? I was actually impressed by home by the Lee um, at Punchestown. Obviously, I'm not saying it's going to go, but it, that, that was an eye catching run uh, behind Darver Star. I think Darver Star was very good on the day, but he stayed on late, and I think a step up and trip is going to suit him also. Um, just a mention for that. So, Dave, um, next, I suppose, before we move on, Gorn, it is a cracking card. Anything else on the card to catch your eye? And first race, Sagavarius of Paul Nolans. Um, he is favourite there. He's five to one. Rob James um, rides him, taking the seven pound off him. It's incredible, really. Rob's rode over two hundred point to point winners. Um, one of the best there is. He's rode Cheltenham Festival winners and everything, but he claims seven still on the track. Um, so he is no doubt the best value at seven pounds in the country. Or Ireland or England for that matter. But um he won on this horse the last day in Nace. He he was I don't know, it, it, the jury was out. Some people say he was going to win, some say he won't. I think he was going to win in Fairy House when he made a very bad mistake at the last with Jordan Gainford. Um and he finished second and then he disappointed after that. But then he dropped back to two mile in Nace and he made all now it was a weak race, Barry. Uh, quite a weak race. This is a step up, all right. But uh, all he does is he just keeps going. You know, he 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 doesn't probably quicken it a great deal, but um, he go a gallop and he'll keep going. I think it's an ideal track for him as well, similar like Nace there. Um, obviously only just going the opposite way, but um, if Rob if Rob can get any sort of a lead on him tomorrow and get him settled in front. Um, I think he, I, I think he could take a bit of pegging back, and um, I think he's worth taking a chance there, five to one, Barry. Okay, Dave. Yeah, the the one I actually liked on the card was was in the same race, Dave uh, Brasner Rocco. Of course After it was, Barry. Of course it was. Yes, yeah, Sonny Carey. Um, he this listen, it, the win impressed me last time. Um. She kind of got outpaced for a stride or two after jumping the second last was was nudging the contention, but thought she was a comfortable winner. Um, mm. And I don't know whether she might have a little bit more to play with. Um, she's only got up six pounds. Obviously, the the track um, Gore might be a little bit more of a test, um, which will probably suit her. So she was one that um, at eleven to two. Oh, sure, look, we might get the winner between the two of us there, Dave. Um, that's that was the the other one I liked on the card. So Brasner, Rocco, and what's all the talk about riches in the bumper? Yeah, uh, so I hear. Yeah, he's eight to thirteen, isn't he? Um, I read on Twitter yesterday, all right, that he's meant to be the the Cheltenham Festival bumper winner already, and he hasn't even ran. Son of Muta here. So um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. A lot of good horses um have won this bumper over the years, Barry. Um. Yeah, so we're going to come to Cheltenham Trials weekend. Um, of course, the we don't have full declarations, Davey. Um, the big race, there's a couple of big races at Cheltenham on Saturday. The 2.30 is the Cotswold Chase. It's a grade two, over three miles and a furlong and a half. Uh, Shantry House heads the betting, even money. A high senor, uh, seven to two, the novice. Uh, I write seven to two, simply the bets four to one. Santini 12s and his 33 to one bar. Uh, Dave, Almost too bad to be true, I thought, Chantry House at Kempton. Uh, back at Cheltenham, where he's won twice. Uh, based on, look, if he's as good as I think he is, 
Um, I think he, he, he will be tough to beat here. Uh, but it is, you are taking the chance. Uh, and after he, he ran an absolute cracker on New Year's Day, he steps back up the three miles. Uh, he is, he's four to one. I think he a little bit of value. And I'm willing to take the chance um, on him. As I said, I think Shandry House might be tough to beat, but my selection would be simply the bets. Um, he is a lightly raced nine year old. And look, I love the way he kind of stuck on the last time. They did come 10 lengths clear. Um, he, he loves Cheltenham, so he's won there twice before. Um, the ground isn't going to be an issue. The ground is good, Dave, at Cheltenham. Um, but he would be my. I'll take a. I'll take a, a punt on him at at four to one. Um, a high senior. I'd be just. I don't know. Just was a little bit worried about his jumping ass. It could be anything, of course. Um, will he run? Is the question. I write. I think he's more or less kind of found out now at this stage. Um, a nine-year-old rate 150. I'm not sure he's much better than that. Where simply the bets, he he does get four pounds in here. Rated 157, and I do think um, stepping up and trip, there's, there's, there's more room for improvement with him. And I do remember speaking to Gavin Sheehan last year on Simply the Bets, and he absolutely loved this horse. Um, so that always kind of did stick with me. Simply the Bets, for me, is the selection. Had you an opinion? Um, uh, you just say about can you give um, Sanctuary House another chance? It kind of goes back to what I said earlier about Henry's horse and the Ladbrokes Trophy in Newbury, you know. Every horse is due a a bad run. I suppose you could put Santry House's bad run down to he 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 jumped off of. He never jumped the fence with Nico in, in, in the King George. Never seemed to be going, never travelling, never jumping. So yeah, um I'll be honest, Barry, I wouldn't have a huge opinion on it, but I, I wouldn't be back in Santry House um just because the jump was so bad the last day. You think there was maybe more to it. I'm not a fan really of a, a high senior. Um a, friend, a good friend of mine, um, I showed him a betting slip that I had of uh, Brave Man's game at Christmas, and he laughed at me. He says he won't win. I says he will win. He says a ah, high senior will, will destroy him, you know. But agree with what you say. Don't think his jump went, went, when they went a good gallop um, got found out. So I'm sure I'll sit on the bench with you there and in the simply the bets camp. He, he had a very good run the last day. Always seems to run well in Cheltenham too, Barry. Um, but look, like you said, if Santry House does turn up to old form, he should be beating these really. And and if he if he's going to be considered a Cheltenham Gold Cup horse, he has to be winning this on Saturday. Mm. Mm. Interesting to be the best. Doesn't have an entry in the Gold Cup. Uh, I don't know. I just love the way he's stuck on. Uh, I don't think Harry Cobden was over hard on him either. Uh, behind Vienna Court, and they, they came well here. So, yeah, interesting. The show five at uh, Cheltenham, of course, is the Cleave Hurdle, and Champ is the one to two um, favourite for the race. Paisley Park couldn't have that now, couldn't entertain no. that whatsoever. Three to one. Mac Abelis, five to one. Uh, Dan Levant, 16 to one. Lizzie Garroster, 16 to one. 33 to one. The rest, um, if they all line up as, as, as they, uh, I suppose, we listed them out there, who would you be with, Dave? Probably Mac Fabulous. I agree. Um, probably Mac Fabulous. Again, because of the prices, I think Champ is very short. He was very, very impressive the last day, but kind of when I seen the results, I went and watched the race. Then I was kind of was taken aback by. It. I was shocked. He was very impressive. So then you'd be thinking, well, why aren't you saying that? I just, I don't know. I don't know. It, it just it seemed too good to be. You would be back, way, you know. <laughs> you would. But no, you're not going to be back in my one to two. But okay. um. I give Mac Fabulous a go, but listen, uh, it's a, it's a, it, it, do you know what? This is interesting because what happens with Classical Dream tomorrow and what happens with this race, these are the best of what the English have at stairs. So it'll be interesting to see what Classical Dream does and then what wins this, you know, and then, then that will kind of really uh, give us a better guide for, for the stairs hurdle in the, at the festival. Yeah, it looked like Champ was going to be absolutely swallowed up, didn't it? And he, he stuck on well mm. when, when, when Tyne Hill came to him. So I do, like, he, he obviously should be favourite. Um, it's a f pretty dismal price. It'll be interesting to see how many runners we get. We only have seven, so maybe Mac Fabulous without the favourite could be an angle. Um, I I probably just, look, I'm going to put him up because I, I did believe uh, last season. Um, I always believed he was a stairs horse. 
and I thought he, his return was quite good, Dave. You know, he, he travelled. He was he was fuller running in the first part of the race. Um, I'm not sure they went over hard fast. The Stormy Island went off, but she kind of dictated. Uh, but he was plenty free. Uh, I thought, and and you know, he was he was fuller running. But when they turned in, I thought he got briefly outpaced or a flat spot, as as you like to call it, Dave. Um, horses don't hit flat spots, according to Davy Boland. But I thought he was outpaced. And again, I don't think Harry Cobden was over hard on him. And what impressed me was the way he ran to the line. Um, you know, I, I would have questioned his Cheltenham form uh, previously. Um, but the way he ran to the line, he really did come up that hill. And he was actually closing the gap all the way to the line behind Stormy Island. So um, I think five to one, yeah, could be value. The better ground is going to suit his good form on uh, good ground. So he'd be my selection. A Paul Nichols day um, at Cheltenham. So, Nicky, you've had enough fun last week. Um, it's time for Paul Nichols to step up to the plate uh, in these big races. But, yeah, yeah. Any, anything else, Dave, I suppose, that caught your eye at Shelton in particular? Um, in the juvenile hurdle, which is the second race at 12.45 on Saturday, I think it's an interesting race. Obviously, we won't know till the morning what's declared. But um, uh, Paul Nichols, that coastal path horse he has, ISO, uh, seem, seems very impressive on his two runs. Uh, there's a few other winners in the race. Um, but the horse I like is Pied Piper of Gordon Elliott's, owned by Andy and Gemma Brown. Um, he was very impressive in Punchestown on debut. Um, this horse used to be owned by the Queen and trained by John Gosden when he was bought a uh, horse and training sale um, last year. And... Um, I remember on Punchestown on the day there was there was all talk of uh of a ban um of Willie Mullins is that you know he's the real deal he's uh the next big thing and uh, he'd win, and Pied Piper um beat him and he just looked like a horse that was always going to improve after that day and uh, I know that they think plenty of him in the yards and uh, he has improved so Davy Russell riding him on Saturday, um. I think it'd be interesting. I'd, I'd say what what will happen as well. Obviously, they're going over there to try and win the race, but they'll get a great gauge of where they are with the English Triumph horses because remember, Gordon Elliott has even a better horse at home in Phil Dore, who is the favourite for the Triumph hurdle. So, um, owned by the same owners. Um, so that'll be interesting. But I I really like um Pied Piper. I think. There's, there's huge improvement in him from the first day. The horse that was third in it, Paul Nolan's horse, who's 15 lengths behind him, he finished second the last day since then, uh, just beating two and a half lengths by another horse of Gordon. So, you know, you can see the form. There, I know it's not great form to go off, but there's bits there to read off. It. Um, but just looking at him in the ring and that he looked like a horse that was uh, that was going to um, improve for it. Um, and yeah, I think he'll win on Saturday, and uh, I think it gives us a great gauge then where we are with where the Irish horses are with, with the English horses for the for the tri Triumph Hurdle. Okay, um, just want to mention uh, tomorrow at, at at Weatherby, Dave, in the one forty five, uh, a horse uh, for the John Joe O'Neill Junior John Joe O'Neill combination, uh, Walk in My Shoes. Um, she is in the in the one forty five. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow at Weatherby, she, um, you might remember me mentioning a horse, Love Envoy, um, who came out, uh, of course, and, and, and won the, the, the nice, uh, novice, uh, mayor's novice race, um, at Lingfield last weekend. Um, this horse wasn't disgraced behind her, um, on her last start, um, over two and a half miles. She was held up. Uh, I thought she kind of stuck it out well. She finished second in a point to point, Dave, uh, for Sean Doyle. Walking my shoes, but walking my shoes yeah. before going to Judge O'Neill. Yeah, she did. In um, Curramore, she was beaten by actually uh, Magic Days, who was trained then by Colin Ball. So this this horse is only rated one hundred and two, uh, and I don't know. I thought she I thought she could be on a nice mark now for a handicap debut. So, yeah, well spotted. Uh, well spotted. Three to one. You talk about magic days. You know, she was beating the Linton a point to point by her and Love Envoy didn't disgrace herself. So that mm. form is after working out not too bad. 102, first time up in a handicap for the O'Neills. Um three to one. Say so this good thing could be supported in the morning. 
Uh, so that's walking my shoes. Um, okay, Dave. Um, anything else, I suppose? Look, obviously, Fairy House is on uh, the Sol Arena. We don't have declarations. We don't really know who's going there. I suppose a couple of likely uh, runners, Granji, Al Jagori, Devasi, uh, two Willie Mullins uh, horses who have won at... Uh, who have won at Fairy House, either of those probably, one of them is probably likely to run. Um, anything, I suppose, at Fairy House or in Ireland this weekend that uh, caught your eye? No, not really. But as you said, it's tough without uh, declarations. But um, if some of those those nice mares, uh, Party Central and Sklandry and uh, Brandy Love, if any of those lined up in that mares hurdle, which is a be a right race. Um, Brandy Love, I'm a big, big fan of hers. Um, small, not the biggest mare in the world, but by God, is she tough and she can gallop. Thought she was very impressive and nice. And uh, I've backed her for the mare's novice hurdle from before that race and after it. And uh, big fan of her, so I'd like to see her out again before um, uh, Chatham. I'm back to Al Jagori of course, the French imports. So, of course, this is all this Irish point to point versus the French imports. Dave, talk to me. <laughs> Look, just I always liked her. Tosh was very impressive when she won her point to point. There's only two and a half mile uh, point to point, which there just me many of them. Uh, she made the run in that day. Um, she was sold on then to Willie. Uh, she won a bumper. Then she was third in a good mare's bumper, um, beaten by her stable companion. And I just thought a nace on her on her hurdle and debut. She was very impressive. Um, and I'd say there's more improvement in her again. And uh, I think we'll be hearing plenty of her. And, uh, yeah, I hope she runs then. But uh, I, I'll fancy her um, when, she, when, when she goes to Cheltenham, hopefully. So, Davy Bolin, it's time for the conclusion of the Champ Daddy podcast and the introduction of the Champ Daddy five cast. And viewers who are watching, we, we do really want you to get involved every single week. The template will be pinned in the comments. So the five cast is the four feature races that we discuss on the show, uh, plus your wild card. So, for example, this week, we're going to be given the first feature race we spoke about is the Tiestes. So what's your Tiestes bet? Uh, the Galmoy, what is your bet in the Galmoy hurdle? The Cotswolds chase, what is your bet in the Cotswolds chase? The Cleave hurdle, what's your bet? And your wild card, which can be a selection from anywhere um, except Dundalk on the flat. Um, jumps only <laughs> i'm joking if it is done doc put it in but that's your that's the champion five cast and davy boland he mentioned the prize earlier is going to give away some merchandise to the winner of um so the first person to land uh, if someone lands the five cast this week great if we to wait till next week or the week after and um, whoever gets the first five cast up gets some merchandise so davy we're going to have a go the champion five cast put it in a lucky 31 if you want to get down tomorrow morning and do that Tiestes, Davey, who are you putting in? I'll go with Death Duty. Absolutely. Don't let the price put you off, Dave. Galmoy Hurdle. Classical Dream. Keeping it safe. Uh, Cotswolds Chase. Do you know what? I know you don't agree, but that's a good thing. I go I right. You're going with I right, and you told everyone that you're going to back simply the bets in the in the show. Good man, Dave. No, Cleave I hurdle. Didn't. I, I I didn't. I started to sit on the fence with you about simply the bets. Uh, Cleave hurdle. Cleave hurdle. Mm. That's fabulous. And your wild card. And my nap of the weekend is Pied Piper in the juvenile hurdle at Cheltenham on Saturday. Great. Tiestes Chase. Franco de Port. Galmai Hurdle. Royal Kahala. Cotswolds Chase. Simply the Bets. Cleave Hurdle. Mac Fabulous. And the Wild Card. And my Nap. Of the week, we're starting on Thursday. On. Walk in my shoes, <laughs> Dave. There we go. So, listeners, You're have a go. Right, the, temp the template is below. Put your selections in, and uh, 
Let's see who who can land the, the first Champ that Eve five cast. Uh, Davy Bowling, it's been an absolute pleasure um, having you on. And we'll get you on, of course, next week ahead of the Dublin Racing Festival. Um, big weekends racing, Dave. Uh, at this point in time, anything catching your eye? I don't know, just looking forward to tomorrow. Huge day, going to be great crack. Um, great race as well, of course. Um, looking forward to seeing Classical Dream as well, how we came out of the uh, Christmas race. And then the weekend, I'm going to Cheltenham on Saturday. Um, and no doubt I'll be at a point-to-point on Sunday. Come on, Dave. Busy, busy for you. Well, we will be back on Monday night, myself and the Golden Groom will be back off the Alps and we'll be doing episode number, I think it's 11, actually, of the Road to Cheltenham Challenge. Uh, great, as I said, the, the subscriber count has gone through the roof ever since we mentioned it. So do subscribe to the channel. As we said, on Monday's show, only 70% of the viewers are actually subscribed. So do that. Put your selections in. Have a go at the five cast and we will see you next week. Inside the final 150 yards, this is a special year. And it's a hands full of great. And it's an argument opening up a clear advantage in the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mile novices. An argument by...